Uh, yo, um, what is up, everybody? Welcome to another tier list video. Um, my name is Dan, and um, we just went. We just got through February 2022. I feel like I barely got through February personally. Um, this month sucked, and I had COVID, and it was like a bad case of COVID. Um, but luckily, there were movies to keep me going. And obviously a lot of other things, like some, some really great friends and some family. Um, but also movies. Movies helped a lot this, this month. Um, yeah, because without movies, I don't know what I would have done with, in COVID. I would have read a tiny bit of Dune, which I still haven't finished. And um, I probably just would have been really bored. You can also hear that my voice is still a bit croaky because of the, of the COVID. Um, these glasses are just for fun. And kind of because this ring light is just so bright right now on my eyes. So there's that. Um, and then Baby Yoda is also here for fun. Sorry, I shouldn't hold him by his ears. His name's actually Grogu as well. And um, Grogu might get a little mention at the end of the video. But we'll see. We'll wait. Let's just, let's just wait till we get there. Okay? Have some patience, y'all. Sick. Let's get into this tier list. Kind of made a few adjustments. Um, for whatever reason, I forgot to put the E and F tier. So nothing's going to go that low this month. Although... I don't think anything I watched this month was that bad. Um, but I just, I made S, S for spectacular, A for awesome, B for best, C for could have been better, and D for decent. Um, so let's get straight into it. Um, starting off with the Tinder swindler. So just some, just some information about myself. I, I've dabbled. I've dabbled in the Tinder. I, I know, I know how Tinder works. Um, it's it's kind of lame, I'll be honest. Um, not much great has come from my Tinder experiences. I'll be honest. I'll be completely honest. But I was really interested in this documentary because it was um, done by the same guys who did the documentary Don't F with Cats, which I thought was a like a fantastic documentary. It's still one of my favorite documentaries to this day. And it might be my favorite Netflix documentary, like honestly. Um, so I was very excited for this because it was the same people. And this was was okay. It was decent. Um, and um, I think ultimately I want to put it in C for could have been better because it could have been better um, like despite some interesting subjects in this documentary I would say it's pretty bland for the most part and because of how the I guess like the con works in this documentary it does feel kind of repetitive at points um, and sort of like I, I felt very intrigued and engaged at the beginning but then as the documentary just carried on, I just was like, okay, I, I kind of know what's going on here now. And I know that someone's going to do something and then that's going to happen. And like, it became a little predictable. So I was a little disappointed, um, but it still is really interesting. And I definitely think it's worth a watch. I think it's a very interesting look on online dating culture, actually, and just the dangers that that can potentially have on individuals. Um, the, the one, the Tinder swindler, I'm not going to, I can't remember his name, to be honest. Um, but, um, just the, how meticulous like his, his cons were and his plan, like it was, it was intense. Um, it's also just crazy how much money some of these women gave to this guy. Like I thought that was crazy. Um, but I, I guess like if you are in that sort of situation and you do believe it's something super serious and you do have the, the funds to potentially help someone out, like you're gonna do it. So I didn't, I didn't necessarily disagree with what these women were doing because they were conned, but um, it's crazy just how much money this guy earned off, off these, off these cons essentially. Next up, we have um, kind of like a, a bit of a hidden gem in my opinion with regards to Martin Scorsese films, and that is Silence. Um, this is a very interesting movie for me, um, I'm, and I'm gonna put it in A for awesome. Uh, I watched this movie for the first time in Denmark in a Denmark cinema and that was a, such a cool experience. So I always have like a fond experience with this movie, but I would say the actual movie is really solid as well. Um, it's about these missionaries who go to try, um, or these, these pastors, I guess, um, who try to go, they're, they're essentially all on like a mission trip essentially, but they try, they go into, um, Japan, um, to try to find out what happened to someone else who had gone there. Um, and it's just really interesting how the perspective of faith um, is discussed in this movie and displayed. Um, I myself am a person of faith, so I think I just find a lot of these themes really interesting and 
um, just just really impactful. Like uh, it was a bit of an emotional movie for me. Um, and what this movie is really good at doing is it doesn't side with what's right or what's wrong. Um, so even though I believe in, in faith and like I'm a Christian, um, this movie doesn't it doesn't make Christianity look like like that's the only correct way. And it doesn't make it look like it's wrong either. It's a very like interesting look at faith. Um, and I really appreciated that because I feel like these sort of movies, like, you know, you know what I mean? Like some of these Christian movies are so like, they're so biased to one side. And I understand that's the point. But um, it's interesting seeing a film about faith that's, that's really like real and it feels authentic and it's uh, yeah it's just it's crazy like it's a really solid film it is a bit long it's a bit of a slow burn and i know some people have a problem with that but i think silence is a really incredible film um and it's very underrated i'm surprised not more people talk about it it's beautifully shot as well it's got liam neeson in it andrew garfield who i would say is the main character and adam driver as well as like a really great supporting cast as well throughout the film um, so it's a really good movie. I highly suggest you check it out if you haven't. It's a bit of a slow burn, so maybe take like a chilled afternoon to watch it. But it's it's fantastic. It's really good. I highly recommend it. Even if you are not a person of faith, I still think it's a solid film. Like I, I genuinely believe that. Um, and I think that's a that's a way Martin Scorsese made this film. He didn't make it for Christians. He didn't make it for non-Christians. It's just a story about that sort of subject matter. But I feel like it can appeal to everyone. Next up, we have The Fallout. This was a HBO Max movie. Don't tell me how I watched it. I have my ways. But um, we watched this. And um, this was actually also... I'm putting this in A for Awesome. It's going straight there. I was shocked at how good this film was. Like, I was shocked. One of the main actresses in this film is um, Jenna Ortega. I think that's how you say her surname. If it's not, I apologize. But um, she was recently in the latest Scream film as well. And um, she is going to go places. Trust me, guys, she is going to go places. Sorry, Grogu. Sorry. Sorry, my baby. Sorry, my baby. Um, but she is definitely going to go places. Like, seriously, she was so good in this film. Pretty much this film is just the... It's the aftermath of a school shooting. Sorry, there's a car driving past. Okay, I think it's gone. It's an aftermath of a school shooting um, in a high school. And um, just how these characters sort of deal with the ramifications of that and the trauma of that and it is a fantastic film bro bro i freaking cried in this film like i cried i cried twice and i don't cry, like i cry in movies like when i cry in films like molly and me you know or like toy story 3 like like movies that i'm like sad like i cry on those films you know and i cried in avengers endgame when tony stark died spoilers but um, i also cried on this film because i just felt like it was so real and it again like it could have felt like a cheesy sort of you know high school drama film but it is so much more than that um it, it doesn't feel like it's it's like stuck in a like a high school sort of film genre which some of these films do get like stuck in i would say so it's a really good film guys i highly highly recommend it um yeah it's it's good it was a really good solid movie so it's going A for awesome. Next up, we have The Last Duel. And, um, oof, this is either going A or B as well. I want to put it in A. Great film. Freaking underrated film. Why isn't this film being spoken about more at awards and award shows? I do not know. It's a really good film. Um, the film is told from three different perspectives and um, from different characters in this film. Um, and it's about... Uh, it's about this one character who gets sexually abused and um, the story is told from three different perspectives. Super interesting. Um, Matt Damon's in this film. Jodie Comer's in this film. She was fantastic. She's the highlight of this movie for me. Um, Adam Driver's in this film. Ben Affleck's in this film. Ben Affleck's got like blonde, blonde ass hair. It's weird, but he's in this film. Um, he's also great. But Jodie Comer, I think that's how you say this in him as well. I might be wrong. But she was fantastic. Um, you guys may have uh, recently seen her in Free Guy. She was great in that. But in this movie, she was the highlight for me. By far. Um, her performance is insane. It's really, really good. The action in this film, although it's not like an action-heavy film, the action in this film is freaking good. 
freaking good. Um, Ridley Scott is a master at his craft at this point, um, which is to be expected. I know he still makes a few, a few films here and there, but um, this is not one of them. This is solid. Um, and just the climax of this film is really, really engaging and really entertaining. And um, I was at the edge of my seat. Really good movie. I missed it in the cinema and I'm really upset about that because it was a solid movie. Next up we have Drive My Car. Um, I'm going to put this in B for best. I thought it was good. It's super long and I felt the length. And um, I don't mind slow burn films normally, but I felt the length on this one. It felt super long. Um, the one cool, like the one positive thing about that is you get to know these characters pretty well, and as these characters change and grow, because of the runtime of the film, it kind of it it makes like I don't know, it makes sense that these characters are changing. If that makes any sense, I don't know if I'm making sense. It's it's yeah, it's interesting. Um, it's pretty much about these people who drive a car, um, but it's also so much more than that. And there are some really interesting things in this film. Um, interesting character studies some of these characters are dealing with trauma and grief and it's interesting how this film tackles that and looks into that it is all in japanese so it's a foreign film but don't let that stop you as i always say do not let that stop you it's a it's a banger um it's good um i do just think it's long for me personally if it was a bit more condensed it would probably be an eight tier. but it's a good movie and then we've got no sudden move watch this with some friends it's a steven soderbergh film and it was most likely the weakest film I saw this month, unfortunately. Um, it's going D for decent. Um, because, yeah, I don't know, man. It had a really good cast. Um, it was shot in a pretty interesting way. Um, but I just got really bored really quickly. And I felt like a lot of stuff was pretty predictable. Um, I would say it's still worth the watch. But um, it was a bit disappointing for me. That's the thing with Steven Soderbergh, like I love some of his films. I love, love, love some of his films, but then some of his films just I don't gravitate towards at all and I don't connect with. That being said, he's still a really interesting filmmaker and I love the style of his films. Um, unfortunately though, this film for me didn't hit the nail on the head, but it, it's still good. It's D for decent, which is not bad. Um, so I do recommend maybe checking it out. Um, but yeah, it was D for decent. Next up, I watched Spencer with some more friends, um, or some similar, some of the same friends and some other friends too. And um, it's great. This is a freaking fantastic film. I've seen this film now every month for the last three months. And um, you know what? I might watch it again in March. Who knows? Maybe I will. You have to wait and see. But it is such a freaking, freaking good film. And I love it every single time I watch it again. I love it more every single time I watch it again. If I could put it like above here, like up somewhere here, if there was another tier, it would go up there. It's so good. I love, I love, I love Spencer. Then I was meant to watch like a lot of Batman films this month, but I didn't get around to it, unfortunately. And I'm a little upset about that. Um, but um, I did watch Batman, The Mask of the Phantasm. And this is also going S tier. This is a sort of sequel to the Batman animated series. And disclaimer, I haven't finished watching that. But um, it, this was a banger movie. This film has more about the Bruce Wayne character specifically than I think like majority of the live action films. And it's really interesting seeing how grief and, tr and tragedy that happens in Bruce Wayne's life like so starts affecting his life as Batman. And there are a few other characters who are similar and their alter egos have sort of been influenced from things that have happened to them in their like personal lives. It's really interesting. And I know you you can argue that's every Batman film, but this film specifically focuses a lot on Bruce Wayne. Um, whereas the other films, although Bruce Wayne experienced tragedy and grief and all that sort of stuff, a lot of the film is focused more on Batman, which makes sense because Batman is a soul card. But I was just surprised at, like, that an animated film chose to focus so much on Bruce Wayne's personal life as opposed to Batman. Batman's still on this a ton, and there's some really great sequences with the Joker as well in this. But um, it is, it is, I just appreciated having more Bruce Wayne in a Batman film. Um, because, uh, yeah, I don't know, it just focuses a lot on what Bruce Wayne's going through um, compared to some other Batman films. Um, if that makes sense, I like, I know every film has Bruce Wayne in it, but this film just has a lot of, it takes a lot of careful consideration to what happened to Bruce Wayne, I guess you can say. Um, it's really good, it's a really good film. One of the best Batman movies I've ever seen, hands down. 
Um, it's great. S for spectacular. I don't know how you spell spectacular. I really hope so. Um, next up, we have Austin Powers, um, the International Man of Mystery. I think this is uh, the name of this one. Um, yeah, you know what? It's going to go B for best. Um, Austin Powers are great. Look, I know they, they probably have not aged well in most people's eyes. They have a lot of sexist jokes. It's a bit ridiculous. I get it. It's definitely like a spoof and parody of like James Bond films, especially like the Roger Moore era James Bond films. But I still really have a great time with these. You know, I really want to see Mark Myers back. You know, he was obviously iconic as freaking Shrek. Iconic. And um, despite the cat in the hat being the worst movie of all time, that it's really fun to watch because of him. <laughs> like, this is a straight fact. Um, so yeah, I, I really like this film. It's 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 probably my second favorite um, Austin Powers film. I'd say the second one was probably the best one for me, and the third one being the weakest. But um, this is a solid film. I did enjoy it. Next up, we have Nightmare Alley, and um, this is also going to go A for awesome. Uh, this is also a film that I was not expecting that much from because of what I had heard from reviews and um, just some other promo material as well. Like there were a few really good trailers, but the posters and stuff were just really average. And um, I don't feel like there's much of like a good marketing compa uh, campaign surrounding this film. That being said, it was amazing. It's an amazing film, and I do feel like this one could honestly, uh, honestly, be bumped up to. S for spectacular uh, after rewatching it again. There's a lot of emphasis and focus on Bradley Cooper's character and the sort of just rise and fall of this character and the sort of like rise and fall of this character. Um, so I really, really love that. And the majority of this film also takes place like around a carnival and um, there were some like really creepy elements there, which I always appreciate. I love the creepy stuff. So that was really cool. Um, supporting cast in this film as well were really fantastic. I would say there is a bit of like a love story in this film, which I didn't really buy into. And I think that's like a big criticism I have with this film. Um, but that being said, I think act one and act three of this film are near perfection. Act two drags a little bit and that's where th the focus on the love story plays a big part in the movie. But um, I would say it's a super solid film, very underrated. I'm surprised no more people are talking about it. And uh, Guillermo del Toro, is that how you say his name? Um, I, someone tuned me for saying his name wrong once in one of these videos, so, uh, so I'm just checking. Guillermo del Toro, Guillermo del Toro, something like that. Um, yeah, he, he did a great job directing this film. Um, it's got such an authentic look, um, a very beautiful look. The, the whole film looks stunning um, and it's shot beautifully, directed beautifully and um, the cast is amazing as well. Highly recommend it. It's a banger. It's really good. A for awesome. Next we have Austin Powers, The Spy Who Shagged Me and um, this, is, this will also go B tier. I liked it slightly better than the first one, so I'm going to put it there. Um, really good movie. Great to see a lot of these supporting characters back um, as well in this one, um, as well as obviously Austin Powers. Um, it does kind of retcon like a huge thing that happens at the end. I'm well, not retcon, but it sort of just disregards a huge thing that happens at the end of the first one, which I was like, oh, okay. So all that was kind of for nothing. But um, I think that's a point of these films that sort of like trying to parody like franchises as well in a way. Um, so yeah, it's a really good film. I do enjoy it. Um, it's, it's a great time. Uh, then we have Austin Powers a gold member, which is obviously like a play on uh, James Bond the game like Goldfinger and uh, Spy Who Shagged Me was a play on uh, the Spy Who Loved Me <laughs> So yeah, uh, sorry gold member is actually not going B tier. It's gonna go C for could have been better um, It's a really fun form this third one um, and a lot of cool action sequences. This one also has Michael Caine who doesn't love Michael Caine? And there are a few other Mark Myers characters who appear in this. So he's playing like a bunch of different characters at this point. Um, as well as the iconic Dr. Evil. So yeah, it's, it's fun. It's a great film. I kind of wish that they would revisit this franchise at this point. I feel like there's been enough time to where, where they could go back and revisit it. The one thing is like, I don't think these sort of films would get away with the jokes that were in, in these films at the time uh, in, the, in today's current uh, climates. But um, it would be fun to see all these characters come back. Um, I know Dr. Evil did like a, I think it was a Super Bowl ad or something recently. So yeah, um, I don't know. I just think it could be fun. I think I like these movies. They're a lot of fun for me. Um, yeah. 
Then we have Luca. Um, this is the first time seeing this, and I've been wanting to see this since it came out on cinemas, and I just I ke kept missing it. Um, and I'm gonna put it in B for best. Um, definitely not Pixar's strongest film, and it's not even near top five for me with regards to Pixar films. But it is still a really, really good and solid movie. Um, super, super good. Really emotional parts again. Um, Pixar normally do do that. Um, and the animation is just absolutely stunning. The, the colors are beautiful. It look, the whole film almost feels like you're flipping through like an art book, like an artist's art book. Um, it's just, and I mean that in the best way possible. It's a beautiful movie, beautiful to look at. And the story is, is also really great. It's about sort of going out into the unknown and um, despite our differences, looking for a place where we can feel like we belong. And I think that's important, especially for young people, as we grow up in a very crazy world with lots of different opinions. Um, yeah, I like this film. I thought it was good. Then I also had another pretty big surprise, um, and that is I Want You Back. This was an Amazon Prime uh, movie. Wasn't expecting much from it, and I really enjoyed it. Um, pretty much, it's about these. It's a bit of a rom com. Um, it's about these two characters who end up breaking up with each other. Um, sorry, these four characters who break up with each other, and then the the one guy and the one girl become friends with each other, and then they try to get their their the significant others that they broke up with back. And that's essentially the film. And as soon as I started watching this movie, I'm like, okay, I know exactly how this is going to end. I know exactly how it's going to end. And I won't lie, there were a lot of surprises along the way, which I was not expecting. And um, it, it, that's why I like this movie. It sort of exceeded preconceived ideas and expectations on what this film was going to be. Um, really great performances. Um, yeah, some of this cast you normally associate with more comedies, and although this is a bit of a comedy at times, there are some deeper moments in this movie, um, which I thought the the cast did great in. Um, so I recommend it if you're into rom coms, especially. The film does still kind of end in a predictable way, but I'd say majority of the runtime, I was like, oh wow, this is happening and that's happening and that's unexpected, etc. So yeah, it's a good time. Then we have The Loud House, and this is going S tier. This was the probably the third time watching this for me. Um, I watched it because of my man Robert Pattinson here. He's going to be the Batman, and I'm seeing him in The Batman tomorrow. Very excited. Um, and then also Willem Dafoe. Willem Dafoe is up there with being one of my favorite actors at the moment. And um, this film is a wild rod, man. It's a wild rod. Um, but it is, it's one of those movies that's, certain people are going to hate like flat out they're going to hate it but it, this film for me is so original so authentic so well made so well directed it's one of those movies where i feel like everything is perfect um and it's like one of the, it's like a perfect film like i honestly feel like it's it could be a perfect film in some in some people's eyes um, the the English like the dialogue in this film is really interesting. There's lots of like yees and I and like I don't know. It's just interesting. It's like Willem Dafoe is it kind of sounds like a SpongeBob character the whole time. Um, I also mean that in the best way possible. But it's a good time and um, just the performances in this are fantastic. Some really weird imagery which I love. You know I love that vibe. I love that stuff. Um, and then there are a few times where Robert Pattinson screams in this film. And it's like etched in my brain. I'll never forget his screams, ever. Um, it's a fantastic film, guys. Um, I wouldn't say it's a horror movie, although some could see it as like a psychological horror, I guess. But um, it's more of like just a, I don't know, just like an interesting character study on like these two characters who are in complete isolation and disarray and uh, confused and they're going slightly mad and um, they're just lost and they have no purpose almost and i feel like that's really interesting and um this film was ahead of its time as well like the sea shanty vibes that became a trend in 2020 this film did it first and um also what i was gonna say um just oh yeah like the whole the whole thing on like isolation and being alone like this film came up before the, the pandemic and although this film is definitely not a commentary on global pandemics i feel like it was just interesting seeing these characters stuck in one location the whole movie and just seeing the damage that does to like a person's psyche um this film touches on that and um i think it's very telling i think it's a good film check it out um 
yeah, it's one of the h highly recommended films this month for me that I, I would say check out. It's it's good. It's really good. Um, yeah. Then we watched the Book of Boba Fett, and um, this is going to see if it could have been better. So I, I touched on this last month a little bit. The show is nearly good, maybe nearly great, but unfortunately, it's just could have been better because um. Every single Boba Fett episode I thought was extremely average and there are a lot of flashbacks and a lot of exposition and I'm like, we know this, we kind of know why Boba Fett's here, we don't have to keep being reminded on well, what his journey's been, we know kind of what's happened to him. It frustrated me a lot. And then um, the episodes that I loved were Mandalorian focused um, and there was an episode with Luke and Grogu, this little guy, I told you I'd mention him, I told you. This little guy, and he's using the force, and he, yeah, he's doing cool things. I'm not going to go into spoilers, but um, those are the best episodes. But I'm like, this is not really a Boba Fett show anymore. It's become like a Star Wars, like anthology, like spin-off, like I don't even know what it was. I, I don't know if the show was called something else. I wouldn't have this problem either. But the show was advertised as a Boba Fett show, and then towards the end of the season, it becomes. A bit of like a Mandalorian show, I would say. And then the last episode, although it sort of has all these characters back together, Boba Fett was not the highlight in that episode for me. And um, I don't know. I just thought this show sort of started off like super low. Like, and then it kind of went up, then went down again. Then Mandalorian comes around, goes up. Like the one, the one Mandalorian episode in this show is some of the best stars I've seen in years. Then it goes down. Then it kind of just stays there and like plateaus. That's a show for me, and um, it's it's a bummer because I was looking forward to this. But um, Boba Fett, I just I don't I liked him as the more mysterious character in the um, original trilogy, um, in the video games, in in um, even in in the prequels. As a kid, he was a bit more of like a mysterious character. I know he kind of got his character fleshed out a little bit more in um, Clone Wars, the animated show, and I liked that. But um, I just liked him as more of like a broody sort of like character who hides in the shadows, you know. The show tried to flesh him out too much and I, I honestly don't feel like the showwriters knew what to do with the character. Like it feels like that. And that for me just means it's a pretty dull experience, unfortunately. So. Like a panther. Yes. Anyway, then we have the Peacemaker and this is going, um, not the Peacemaker, just Peacemaker. But this is going to A tier. This is a spin-off um, to The Suicide Squad, which also came out recently. Was it? Yeah, last year. It came out last year. Um, really good show. It's about John Cena's character, Peacemaker, from that film. Um, James Gunn directs um, and writes the show. Um, it's an HBO Max show. And it is fantastic. It's really, 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 really good. Um, Again, Warner Brothers, look at the properties where you've given your directors and your filmmakers creative control. Look how good they are. Let people make what they want to make and trust them to make it. Because this is a true reflection on what the DC cinematic universe could be, in my opinion. Um, I know people have an issue with it because of all the humor and stuff. Um, it's James Gunn. You're going to expect certain humor. But despite the humor, this is, is still a believable tie into what Zack Snyder has established um, in this universe and I think it's really cool I think it's really really cool um, I really recommend the show it's a lot of fun it's quite whack it's quite weird it's got like a Suicide Squad vibe so if you did like that movie I feel like you'll enjoy it if you didn't like that movie you probably won't enjoy this um, but I would still recommend uh, recommend it because it's really good um, I think it's been renewed for season 2 which is really exciting and apparently James Gunn's also doing another spin-off DC show for HBO Max as well as a season two for Peacemaker. So I'm really excited for that. Um, yeah. It's also just cool seeing James Gunn direct TV. Um, yeah. I feel like he's, he's good at TV as well. Um, obviously, I love his movies, but um, he's good at TV too, which is really exciting. So, yeah. Guys, on that note, that is what I watched. Oh, flip it, Sprout. That is what I watched in February of 2022. I nearly said 2020, because it still kind of feels like 2020. Um, Yoda's going to grow. Actually, I'll hold on to Grogu for now. Um, 
yeah thanks for watching this i appreciate it i'll do another one for march i'm watching the batman obviously i'm really excited for that um and yeah just thanks for watching these videos uh i know they're sometimes quite long probably quite dull quite boring but i just appreciate you guys um movies are a big passion of mine and it's i just like that people like listening to me talk about movies um i have been dabbling with an idea of doing a weekly show almost um kind of like what john campier does i'm a big fan of john campier but it obviously would not be as professional as his show because his show is top class but like i don't know i'm just kind of thinking of like maybe like every week on a wednesday just having like an hour where we talk about movie news and stuff that's happened um yeah so if you interested in that comment down below but thank you i hope you guys are doing good it's been a tough month but um i hope it's been good for you guys um yeah i love you guys bye